before dawn at Houston's Bush Intercontinental Airport. Four buses arrive at the terminal. It's the first stop on a day to honor 111 men and women who served in World War II. They'll board a charter flight that will take them to see the war's memorial in Washington, D.C. It's called an honor flight, and it begins with a hero's welcome. Volunteers gather to give a proper send-off to veterans like Marco Varelis, a decorated soldier from Houston who served in Burma. You know, I always wanted to come over, and I never did have the opportunity to come over. Ann Watt trained as an army nurse. She signed up hoping to serve with one of her four brothers who were all in the war. It's just amazing. <laughs> the response and the, the, the way people are responding to us. We just did what we thought we should do at that time. Yeah, and what any good American would do. I was in that B-29 Army Air Corps. John Darrow went from farm boy to elite bomber pilot in the war. <laughs> These veterans are mostly in their 80s and 90s. One vet is celebrating his 98th birthday on this flight. As they get up in age, the so-called greatest generation gets smaller in number every year. Honor Flight is a national charity that takes groups of vets on day trips to the nation's capital to see it before they pass on. This Lone Star Honor Flight was organized by Montgomery, Texas Junior High School and history teacher Brenda Bevan. My class is a uh collected about $6,000 just in my classes so for to help finance this trip. Some friends of mine that went on the first they told me you owe it to yourself to do this. So I did. The three-hour flight from Houston to Washington Dulles gives the vets a chance to swap war stories quite literally with their fellow passengers. Age may have slowed them down, but it has not diminished the memories of wartime. Though many come from Texas and nearby states, in war they were scattered across the branches of service, across theaters of battle, from Europe to Africa to the Pacific. It has been our pleasure having you on board with us today, and we look forward to seeing you on the return trip. Have a pleasant stay here and enjoy Washington, and we'll be looking forward to seeing you when you come back. See you on the way back. Do you like the coffee? The coffee? Yeah, do you like the coffee? Okay, we're going to join you this afternoon. All right, thank you very much. The whole trip was fantastic. The workmanship in there, the stewardess, the flight attendants, the pilots, and what have you. The food was excellent. If you couldn't beat it with a stick. Touchdown in Dulles, and there's another hero's welcome. That. Each vet has a volunteer guardian to help them through a very long day. Well, he's my father-in-law, and um, I thought it would be a great experience. And those are my parents. For Barbara Terry, volunteering is a way to honor the memory of her parents, who both served in the Marine Corps in the war and recently passed away. I just realized that this generation will be gone in 10 years and they won't see this, this uh, wonderful monument in their honor. So I couldn't do it for my parents, so I just chose to do it for some other World War II veterans that, that, that I didn't know, but that I knew deserved it just as much as my parents would have. The buses arrive at the National Mall on a sunny and warm afternoon. In the midday heat, Iris Howes takes her guardian up on an offer of a wheelchair. I haven't been in a wheelchair since I fell and broke my ankle. Oh, come on! Iris served in the Navy Waves, or Women Accepted for Volunteer Emergency Service. I am joined in December of 42. Her husband Dick was a pilot in the Army Air Corps and survived a crash when his bomber was shot down. Okay. Dick and Iris met in Japan after the war. They've been married for more than 60 years. Filing in on foot, 
on walkers and on wheels. Yes, sir. <laughs> 111 vets, each with a personal story from the war, many with memories of friends who didn't make it home, witnessed the monument for the first time. We had a walk of honor where we brought the flags that are over here to uh, see for the, the people that had, were unable to make the trip. And uh, our veterans followed the flags into uh, the World War II Memorial and they came to the Texas Pillar. The World War II Memorial is a granite circle surrounding fountains. Its pillars honor those who served and those who died from every state and territory of America. The first thing that came to my mind was, uh, I forget when this thing was starting out, and they were asking us to uh, donate, and I thought I was making a big donation of $100. I wish I had done 500 instead, because this is beautiful. Ernest Aguilla was a forward observer for artillery in the European Theater of Operations. But everything here is uh, where it should be. Everybody that went is taken care of, we're all given our due, and I think that people will be coming here for thousands of years, because this is great, this is for lives of time, not just one lifetime. It's a privilege in order to come and see something like this before, before you know, I said, I, 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 maybe I get to go before I die, because all second world war vets died in about a thousand every day. <laughs> so yeah. uh, it was really important for me too. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm so proud that uh, I'm so glad that uh, I was able, they were able to bring me here. Marco Superellis won a bronze star for bravery in action. He says he and a couple of other friends would always raise their hands for the most dangerous assignments, almost on a dare. Uh, and I walked the Burma Road barefooted for, <laughs> for about 16 miles. My feet was all the pieces of blood everywhere, yeah. Marty, there you go, stay just like that. Many admit it's hard to talk about what happened back then, even to their families. It seemed that uh, right after the war, no veterans wanted to talk about it all. I think I never talked to my kids about it, which is a big mistake, we sure have. And I think a lot of veterans, veterans the last 10 years have been opening up a little bit. Being here at the memorials for World War II and the Korean War gives them a chance to reflect on and discuss momentous events they experienced when they were all so much younger. I think it was just too you're, serious, too... Uh, well, you, you um, remember I mean, you, the good you things and you try to forget the bad things. There are plenty of bad things that you didn't want to remember. The good friends that didn't make it. A final stop before heading home is Arlington National Cemetery with its elegant rows of headstones and the ceremony at the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. Heart of Honor, Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. The ceremony that you are about to witness is the changing of the guard. The Tomb of the Unknown, that was something. A fitting way to end a day of honor. You know, I could tell the, the sparkle in his eye was special. And I, he's having a hard time uh, expressing that, but it was there. What does it mean to you that these people were willing to put this together to take you there? What, is it, what does it mean to you? It means something to me. They've given me back something that they, I did for them. And they're giving it back to me. And that's, that's I couldn't ask for anything better than what y'all did. Reporting for Time.com, this is Craig Duff.